your career has primarily been focused on the private education space. In fact, really religious private education, but at the university level. Uh, you've also though had leadership roles and I believe currently have leadership roles in the public sphere of education. So could you elaborate on that just a little bit more and why did you get into that space and how? Well, I would say, first of all, you need to understand that all my high school and elementary school were done in public setting. It was okay. a small rural school in uh, Galax, Virginia. And uh, by the way, my teacher started every day with uh, reading of the Bible and saying of the pledge and having prayer with us. And I'm not that old, uh, so it's not been too many years ago. And uh, the focus in that was uh, an education that focused on uh, reading, writing well, having good thought process in writing. It was focused on math skills and math development. And uh, it was focused also in understanding our history, because if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Some have said, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. And so uh, that school really focused us on the, the basics of education. And I learned well, and I had, and there was a good moral code, a good value system that taught me well. When I started getting uh, into college, uh, my first course at the University of Kansas was a, uh, a young professor who walked in the room and in his educational philosophy class, said to me, oh, uh, so you think there's a God? Now we're in education philosophy class and he's wanting us to study education philosophy. And we had one project for that class. That class had to be to develop our own education philosophy. And you passed or failed the class. My first master's class on that is the University of Kansas. He, he brought in and said, so you think there's a God? And then he went on to tell us all the ways and all the reasons that there wasn't a God. Well, I was bold enough to build my education philosophy around biblical centering and uh, ended up passing the class with a 99. And he wrote on my paper, I wish you had told me more. That made me realize that there are numerous people who have never heard of uh, Christ and a value system, even a moral code that comes from the Jewish Old Testament system, and that I needed to be a, an advocate and a voice. And so at the age of uh, slightly over 30, Dick Luger in Indiana, a senator, I met him at an event he had invited me to, and I've always had some interest in political things just for, it's my hobby. Politics is my hobby. I get, I laugh so much when people say, oh, you know, all oh, this politics, you're so involved. That's my hobby. It's just fun. Okay. That's my outlet. Like some people want to go play golf. I just soon go to a political event and hear all the views and debate and understand. And I like both sides. So it's fun. So I was at that. And I said to Mr. Luger, I said, I would love someday to serve in, in an education policy position in DC. And he said, well, would you send me your resume? And I did. And at 35 years old, I was appointed by Rod Page, secretary under George Bush, to be one of the nine members of the Fund for the Improvement of Post-Secondary Education, which gave about $400 million a year away uh, throughout the nation for improving education. It's all about excellence. Well, I go in a room and I'm sitting there and almost every professor is Harvard, Yale, and here I am, a young 35-year-old a uh, guy that's just learning about education and the education I got from that was amazing. Yeah. As I, as I heard debates and, and, and heard what went on and that just spurred me to want to be involved. So when I got to uh, Ohio and became president, uh, I quickly made connections with senators and congressmen and, and, and U S senators and governors. And I uh, got involved in their campaigns and I support, good candidates. And uh, I ended up being appointed, uh, met the right people. They saw my, my enthusiasm for excellence in education and uh, having a great moral education. And so I was appointed to the State Board of Ohio. Became known as a faith guy. The, 
the uh, Akron Plain Dealer loved to call the faith guy on the board, one of 19 members. And they thought they were taking shots at me, but it was just a joy to be called that because it's exactly how I would have wanted to be labeled because I, I wanted to represent Christ in a loving and powerful way. And the impact was great. Uh, there was one story I've got to tell you. Uh, if you think you can't, if you think one person can't have impact, marijuana was about to be legalized in Ohio. And I was dead set on that. So I, I did research on Colorado and all the effects it was having on the education process. And I went in with reams of paper for our school board and, and asked them to pass a resolution to oppose marijuana in the state of Ohio. Now, I had 11 to 8 board vote, okay? We were in the majority, 11 to 8. But that, that resolution, I wrote it and said, due to the educational impact, due to all the children that are having overdoses where they find leftover drugs, due to the mothers and fathers that are abusing their children as a result of drugs, and I gave all these premises, that resolution ended up passing 17 to 2. Wow. And we made front page of the paper. We got press out of that. And I believe it was a key part in the constituents defeating marijuana in Ohio, 65 to 35. Uh, I'll never forget it. And I knew I had to do something. And as a leader in Ohio, call me the faith guy if you want to. We got marijuana shut down for a while in Ohio. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong with faith. We believe that you know, faith is just a critical part of everybody's life, whatever faith that may be. And some people choose that they don't want to be labeled faith or whatever, but all of it, in a sense, is is a faith system. Right. Uh, it's just the way we're designed, and all of us have that as just a part. And without without nurturing that in some way, we don't really become complete as people.